Hello, and welcome to Imaginate Technologies Big Ideas virtual event for the Autodesk Factory Design Suite. My name is Rusty Belcher, and in this video I'm going to present the demonstration of the Factory Design Suite that we supplied during the Big Ideas virtual event. If you'd like to see a full presentation of this demonstration, please contact your Imaginate Technologies account representative. Hello, my name is Rusty Belcher, and I'm a manufacturing application engineer working with Imaginate Technologies. And today I'm going to take a look at the Autodesk Factory Design Suite and how you can use it to augment your current factory layout processes. I actually have my Navisworks application open right now, and when you think of the Factory Design Suite, you don't immediately think of a supermarket. But I got to tell you, anytime uh, you're laying out a particular area with custom assets, you certainly want to consider using the factory design suite. I think we've all been to a supermarket before and we all realize that just about every supermarket contains the same general assets. Uh, the checkout counters, the shelves, and the units there are basically interchangeable from one supermarket to the next. This data in this particular case came from a wide variety of CAD sources and this Navisworks application I'm using right now allows me to seamlessly walk through this incredibly large file made up of CAD data that comes from various CAD sources and I can bring them all together into this virtual mock-up and we can experience this particular supermarket as if it were real. You can actually go over here and take a look at the bakery and you see all the assets that we use to create this from the sink to the freezer to the ovens. I can go over here and take a look at the the uh, box freezers and the frozen food sections and I can jump over here to the shelves in the dairy area. So you can see how Navisworks is a great presentation tool and it allows me to experience this entire mock-up uh, as if it was real. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. I certainly want to focus on factories today and this is an example of an entire bottling factory. I'm going to hop in here and stand on top of a palletizer and take a look around. And in this example you can see just how immense and all the conveyors and, and how big this factory actually is. And it's uh, Navisworks does an amazing job of allowing me to deal with data this large. This is really far beyond what a typical CAD system could deal with. When you're talking about large models, I don't have any larger examples than a ship design. I'm actually going to pull up an entire ship deck here. We're actually able to see the entire thing all at one time. I'm going to jump down to the pump room on this particular boat and this customer actually used the factory design suite uh, to convert one of the pump rooms into an onboard gym. So you see all of the assets, uh, you know, onboard a ship, you make the most of the limited space that you have available. And here we can see that the gym equipment laying right beside the uh, assets for the pumps. They actually use the assets in this case for the, f the uh, HVAC, the duct work overhead, as well as the cable runs and even the structural steel bulkheads. The command and control room inside of this model was also done with the factory design suite. Again, anytime you have to make the most of your limited floor space, uh, you certainly want to consider utilizing the tools inside of the factory design suite. Well, let's take a look at our first major example today, and this is a general factory. I'm going to jump down here on the shop floor and we're going to look around. I've got some uh, press brakes over here. If I turn around I have some robots and some uh, pallet loading stations here. And I'm going to walk up to this general conveyor cell and take a look. We're going to lay out this cell first in our demonstration today. You know if you're a system integrator and you need a tool that you can take your customers existing floor plans and start adding your own custom assets to their floor plans to present your solution to their problem, you certainly want to consider utilizing the tools in the factory design suite. Now there are a number of workflows that are available in the Autodesk factory design suite. And in this example, I'm going to focus on the inventor-centric workflow. I have my inventor application open, and I'm going to create a new layout. When you begin a new layout, Inventor automatically places a floor in an assembly. You can modify the size of the floor, 
and you can change its size or its elevation if you have a design with multiple levels. Another great tool that we have at our disposal is the Add DWG Overlay command. This allows me to go out and bring in an AutoCAD drawing and paint reference lines onto the factory floor. Now this particular AutoCAD drawing was done in AutoCAD Architecture. AutoCAD Architecture is the member of the factory design suite that we use to generate the shell of our factory. Things like walls, windows, and doors are easily created in the AutoCAD Architecture product. So we'll bring in that drawing and we'll paint those reference lines onto our inventor floor. So here you can see the work cell, the two-dimensional version of it, that we saw in the Navisworks example. Another thing we have inside of this uh, factory design suite for Inventor is the asset browser and the asset properties. So give me a minute and I'm going to place these things right down here so we can see them and utilize them during our presentation. The factory asset browser gives me access to an incredibly large library of common conveyor, or I'm sorry, common factory layout assets. Uh, we have assets, system assets, uh, we certainly have architectural, building utilities, conveyor assets, and the list goes on and on. I'm going to be working with conveyors here, but anything I show you with these conveyors are going to work with the, any asset you use with the factory design suite. I'm going to bring out a straight belt conveyor, and we are going to snap this asset into place on top of the AutoCAD geometry. Once we snap it in place, we can then click to drop it off in any orientation. So let me zoom back in here and I'll place another asset. And you can see that as these assets come together, they automatically sense one another with those green connectors. And they snap together like those building bricks you used to play with when you were a kid. When you select an asset, the factory properties window will light up with any parameter value that you want to change for that particular asset. And in this case, I want to change the length of this asset to 20 feet. And you can see the asset automatically update to suit that particular change. Well, let's go ahead and finish up uh, building this particular conveyor section. We're going to start our, we'll, we'll continue on with an incline belt. And then I'll place a horizontal curve section here. Now watch the legs of this horizontal curve section as I place it. These assets are smart enough to know that if they're floating a certain distance above the floor, that the legs need to lengthen and meet the floor. And that happens all automatically. Again, you see the same thing here with the straight conveyor section. Let's go over to the side and finish up the conveyors here. We'll add a curve section here. Another straight section. I'm going to need a straight section there for a minute, so we'll just drop, uh, drop that off there. We'll bring in the Y sections. And then we'll drag this section over here and dock it right in place. I'm going to change my category, and this time I want to go into the roller conveyors. We have the same uh, setup here with the roller conveyors. So we'll drop those right in place. And in next to no time at all, I actually have all the conveyors for this particular station already done. Now the next thing I want to do is bring in a model from another CAD source, and to do that, I'm going to use the in insert model command. When I start the insert model command, I want to pause for a moment and let you see all of the supported file types that are available here. Uh, all of the Autodesk file types from AutoCAD to Inventor, uh, CATIA, DXF, IGIS, NX, Parasolids, Pro-E, uh, and the list goes on. STEP, IGIS, ACES, SOLIDWORKS, all of those uh, are available. So anything I do here with this part that initially came from AutoCAD, I could do with those file types as well. When you bring in a file from another CAD source, it actually puts it into a bounding box and the bounding box lands on the floor automatically. You then have the option to reorient 
the design, depending on the authoring system and what they used as an upwards direction. Moving this object into place is very, very easy. Inside of the factory design suite, they, they have so many tools that make working in 3D a breeze. Uh, so I'm going to select this part, and using the reposition command, I simply drop a little triad on the part. I can then use the rotation tools to lock it into its uh, rotation orientation. And then I can select the, the uh, little purple dot right in the corner. And I can move it over here and drop it right onto its footprint. So even though the part wasn't created with the factory design suite, I still have those factory design suite functionalities that I can apply to it. Now I want to finish this off by dropping in a couple of more assets. Uh, we're going to go over here to the material handling section. And I want to bring in a forklift and a uh, box. So I'm going to zoom in here and it's going to bring in this box. We'll put it in at uh, 45 degrees. And I'm going to bring in a fork truck. And again, we'll put that in there at 45 degrees as well. And then we'll simply move the, posi or move the parts into place just using this simple drag and drop approach. And we have the basis for our work cell. Now I'm going to save my file and I want to create a drawing of this particular design. You know, it's great working in 2D, but I still have to generate two-dimensional drawings. And there's so many ways to generate drawings with the factory design suite. In this particular workflow, I'm actually going to generate my drawing inside of Inventor. I still want to create a DWG, though, so it's important we start this process off by using a DWG template. So what you see here is a DWG file. I'm going to create my base view. We'll drop that off right there will automatically be put into our orthographic projection so I can generate my top view. I could do an isometric view here, but I'm just going to right click and just create these two. If you want that isometric view, let's simply create another sheet and place the isometric view over there. So back on sheet one, I want to drop my bill of material for this design. So I'm going to select the view, we'll click OK, and all of the metadata for all the parts are automatically put into a spreadsheet that we can put in the corner of the drawing. Notice all the data, uh, all the names of the components and the quantity is automatically calculated for you. And I'm going to do a, a little ballooning here. We'll simply select these parts place our balloons and select OK. So that quickly we have the three-dimensional design and our two-dimensional layout. And of course there are plenty of other annotation tools as well. I'm just going to come in here and just drop a general dimension up onto my isometric view. I want this to be an architectural scale and we'll lay it out over here. So there we go. So generating your documentation from your three-dimensional models is a breeze using the 3D workflow with the Autodesk Factory Design Suite. Now I'm going to close these files and I want to take a look at another example using a different workflow with the Factory Design Suite. Now to set up my next example, I'm going to hop back over into my Navisworks application and I'm going to open up an example uh, to show you what we are going to be working on. Here we have a manufacturing facility. We're going to be working on a welding cell. This particular welding cell uh, is set up to support this uh, end loader cre uh, assembly and specifically the bucket on the end loader. Now if I turn around and we're going to walk over here inside of Navisworks and let you see the actual welding cell that we're going to be working on and creating in our next exercise. You know, as a uh, if you're a system integrator, you just have to love this example. Uh, we're actually putting a very elaborate welding cell 
right next door to a paint shop. And typically, you know, a paint shop right next door to a welding cell, not a very good idea. You have flammable fumes and things like that. So our air handling system on this welding cell has got to be top notched and welding uh, and the air handling, of course, is great inside of the paint cell. But also I've got a fire suppression system and we're actually working in this demonstration with multiple contractors and bringing all of this data together inside of the Navisworks environment. Now, maybe you are a custom machine builder. Uh, certainly any system integration group might have the need to create custom machines like this specific clamp that's going to be used in this demonstration. Well, this particular clamp, we have created it in Inventor and we're going to use it as an asset. And I want to start my next presentation by showing you how that asset was created. So back over inside of the Inventor application, I'm going to open up the model that you just saw. One of the big advantages of the factory design suite is that it is built on top of the premier manufacturing modeling solution available from Autodesk, and that's Autodesk Inventor. You simply put, you can model anything easily with the Inventor application. So if you have to create your own custom assets, not a problem utilizing the Inventor utility. Now once you have the model set up, you want to convert it to an asset, and that's where the Factory Design Suite comes in. The Factory Design Suite gives me the Asset Builder, and this is a very nice, simple little environment that you can add information or asset information to your model. You start off by adding a landing surface. You simply select a surface of the model, and then you utilize insertion points. If you've ever created a block inside of AutoCAD, then you're familiar with this process. The next thing we want to do is define a connector. You saw how I used those connectors in the previous example, and they're actually very easy. You can select any point and then simply arrange for the triad, the blue axis on the triad, to point upwards. And there you have your connector. It's that easy. If that connector ever sees another connector, they'll automatically snap together. You saw the metadata in the parts list in the previous example. You can load all of your metadata here in the asset properties. And if there's any custom data that you need to include, you have an option to include that as well. And if you have asset variants in this particular case, there is an asset variant that gives me a single clamp or a double clamp. And we can add that information in as well. Now I could publish the asset and I already have this particular asset published. Uh, so instead of publishing it here, I'm actually going to play a video and talk about some of the benefits you can utilize or see by publishing your assets instead of uh, to your network, uh, to your factory warehouse. It's actually possible to publish your assets to the factory warehouse, to the cloud, so that anyone using Factory Design Suite can utilize your assets. Maybe you are uh, an equipment manufacturer and you want other people to use your equipment. Well, when you publish the asset, instead of publishing it local, you can publish it to the cloud. You can set up a collection and you can define those metadata properties that are unique to your asset. You simply pick OK and then anyone else using the factory design suite could then do a search and find your particular asset. There is an online window into your asset collections. You can go up, get an account, and log in. This allows you to go up and manage your collections without needing a license of Autodesk Inventor. Once you get up there, you can modify whether or not the asset is shared publicly. You can also choose to review your ratings or your comments that other people are making on your asset. You can also modify that metadata from the web interface. Like I said, anyone that wants to use your asset can simply right click on it and drag it from their asset browser into their design. So now you've seen how we've created the asset. Now I want to start the workflow for generating the welding cell.
Now this workflow starts in the AutoCAD environment. I'm going to open up a typical drawing. This is typically how a, a, a system integrator would start a project. You go on site, hopefully you can harvest some existing drawings of a factory or a facility and you can bring those back and start removing things and adding your own custom information into the design. So this is what we have right here. We're going to come in and here we see the top down view the area that we're going to place our welding cell. This is actually an XREF so I'm just going to choose to do the main work inside of a reference. So there we've got the fence. I've already got that started. And inside of the AutoCAD environment, I also have access to my factory asset browser. Now for this example, I'm going to use my favorites area. This is a great way to manage your, your assets. I just have a, a typical area where I use my assets uh, all the time. And I'm going to bring in the riser for this design. Here is the arm clamp that I showed you previously. This, uh, when you publish an asset, it creates a two-dimensional version of it as well as the three-dimensional version. The two-dimensional version is what you use inside of the AutoCAD environment. I'm going to bring in a mastic clamp here as well. And I have a third clamp that sits down here at the end. I also have some wire welders. We'll place those out here. Now these are just AutoCAD blocks, so if I use my copy command, I can very easily generate copies of this. And very quickly set up the initial layout for our welding cell. Now you also have access to all of those system assets you saw in the previous example. So I'm going to go back over here to the roller conveyor and we actually have specific assets that do asset chaining very very nice and functional in this particular case I can drag this out and simply draw a chain of assets so that's a conveyor line and you'll see that conveyor line convert uh, automatically when I send this over to inventor in a moment so now that I've got my file set up, it's time for me to send this over to Inventor. And this bidirectional workflow that I'm talking about now allows me to work in 2D when it makes sense to work in 2D and then send it to 3D when I'm ready to send it to 3D. So I've saved my file and now I'm going to go up and use the sync to Inventor command. We'll click OK and you'll see AutoCAD go to the background and Inventor come to the foreground. What Inventor's doing right here is pretty neat. It actually takes that two-dimensional floor plan that we were working on inside of AutoCAD and it paints those reference lines automatically onto the Inventor factory floor. You'll then see the three-dimensional counterpart of the 2D asset appear on top of the corresponding asset. I'm actually hands-free at this point I'm letting the computer do all the work for me. And you just have to love any workflow where you can just take a break and let the computer do the work for you. A couple of things you're going to see here. This takes about a minute to happen. You're going to see different conveyor colors come in. And this is really neat. Uh, the tool is smart enough to use a standard length whenever a standard length will work. But if, you have, if it has to use a custom length, it will highlight that for you in the design. So you see the little red conveyors. Those are custom links of conveyors that are necessary for the design that I called out. At this particular point you'll start to see the three-dimensional assets come in and land on top of their 2D counterparts. So there you go. 
In about a minute, we've seamlessly moved from the 2D AutoCAD environment right into the 3D Inventor environment. Now I'm going to get over here to my favorites area and I'm going to add some information to this design. The first thing I want to do is add the seventh axis to the robot riser. Now here's that connector again and one of the things connectors do if you have assets with the same parameters you can build in relationships so that the new asset will update to the existing asset and resize itself automatically. Very very nice functionality. I've also got some robots that I'm going to add on top of the seventh axis here and we'll drop those things right in place. We can take advantage of those asset variants you saw earlier. Here's the clamp. We can come in and modify its asset variant and set it to be the double clamp. You'll actually see the double version appear automatically. And the same thing you saw earlier when I lengthened the conveyor and it got extra legs, it happens to the width as well. So I can come in and modify the width of this conveyor to 48 inches. And just like you saw earlier, all of the assets that are tied to that particular asset will update automatically when that change occurs. I think to yourself how long it would take to make this change in a conventional top-down AutoCAD approach you'd have to change every single conveyor in the line. And this is actually a pretty short line. So you'll see it automatically update to suit the new width that we just called out. Now at this point, I'd like to send the data back to AutoCAD. So I'm just going to save my file, and then I'm going to use the sync to AutoCAD command. This is the exact opposite of what we did when we used the sync to inventor command. In this particular case, it disassembles the three-dimensional assembly, updates the floor plan, and sends that floor plan back over to AutoCAD. So basically, we get to do all of that 2D work for free. Once it's finished, it gives us the option to open it inside of AutoCAD. And here you can see our AutoCAD application open with all the changes we made to our initial design. And if I go back all the way back to the very first drawing we opened, I actually have the option to reload all of this information into the main drawing. Now I'm going to jump back into Inventor. We have some additional work that I'd like to do on, the, on this welding cell. I need to bring in that overhead robotic welding station. And to do that, I'm going to use the insert modeling tool we used in the previous example. This is a fantastic way for me to collaborate with people using other CAD systems. In this case, I'm working with a collaborator, and they actually are also using the factory design suite, which is very nice. There are some plenty of benefits for that. But I'm going to bring this in and drop it right there. And this is our contractor working with them. They were responsible for doing the overhead robotic assembly. So here you can see that information put in on top of our the groundwork for our robotic line. Now, there are a number of ways for us to actually compare our digital assets with the real world facility. And as an example of that, I'm going to come over here and turn on the visibility of a point cloud. Uh, a point cloud uh, can be created with a laser scanner. Uh, we've got a, a, a big relationship with Leica and uh, at, at Imagine it, and you know, certainly work with them, and they basically have the top. Uh, performing laser scanner in the world. And it's just amazing to see uh, the real world scan of a facility and how my model actually interfaces right along with it. Now this building is not the actual building that you saw in the demonstration. It is just one that is very similar to uh, the setup here that uh, we've used in, in the past. So we can actually see how our assets 
correspond in a real world situation. Just a fantastic way for me to confirm that I'm on the right track and that I'm not going to make a horrendous mistake uh, with my design by comparing it to the actual facility. Now, for this example, I'm not going to keep the point cloud open. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that back off and we'll put ourselves back over here in orthographic mode. Now at this point, I want to go over and explore, I guess, the next step. I want to take our welding cell and I want to put it in context of all the other cells in the entire facility. And you've already seen the tool we're going to use to do this. This is the Navisworks utility. Let's go ahead and open up uh, the facility we were looking at earlier. This is the entire manufacturing facility. Uh, here's our new cell and we'll go in and take a look at that in a minute. But I want to go back down here to the shipping area. You saw these, the red text you saw earlier, uh, even in the supermarket. And I want to talk about what's going on here. Navisworks allows me to combine data from multitude of CAD sources. If I go over here and use the append command, you can actually see all of the CAD sources that are available. All of the Autodesk file types, uh, all the file types I mentioned before, CATIA, NX, ProE, uh, SolidWorks, all those things are available on top of things like Google SketchUp and Leica uh, point cloud scans. Uh, just tons of information, even 3D Studio models you can use with Navisworks. So for instance, some of these assets came from AutoCAD. A lot of these assets came from Inventor in the, in the, mod, uh, the manufacturing modeling environment. But any of your manufacturing tools that work with STEP, IGES, or ACES can absolutely be used. CATIA V4, CATIA V5, even things like the DWF files you get from all the Autodesk tools, those highly compressed DWF files, you can use those with Navisworks, along with Google SketchUp. You know, Google SketchUp has one of the largest free uh, model libraries on the internet. Uh, you go up there and type in forklift and you'll see a hundred different forklifts to choose from. And of course things like SolidWorks and Pro-E uh, can be brought into this environment as well. So if you're collaborating with somebody who's using a different CAD package, don't worry about it. Uh, you can bring all their data together. Now, uh, the building in this particular case was done with Revit MEP. So you don't have to use the architectural elements that are part of the factory suite. You can use different architectural elements if you want to. But I'm going to walk up here to the welding cell and I want to focus quite a bit up here on the air handling system. This was really important that we get this right. So we had the air handling system was done with the overhead robotic cell and then we had the fire suppression system was done by another contractor. And for the first time, these two models are meeting in the same environment, and we see that there's a problem. Navisworks has a very robust set of clash detection tools. Uh, if you buy the factory design suite ultimate version, you can uh, access the clash detection tools. They're only available in factory design suite ultimate. But in this test, I have it set up to compare my suspended welding system against the sprinkler system. We'll go ahead over and check out the results and you can immediately see that there are, it's not just one problem, we have multiple problems. A number of the ducts are affected by this clash. Now I want to talk about change for a minute and how you deal with change. Uh, can you imagine all the work that would have to be done to fix this in a classic top-down AutoCAD approach? It is an immense amount of work. So I'm going to close this one out here and jump back over into Inventor. Now, I'm going to focus on these ducts here. And I'm going to just change my selection for a minute. Our collaborator, our contractor that did the overhead welding section, was using the factory design suite. So these are custom assets. They're not just regular ducts. So I can come in for the height here and I can change this to 30 inches. And just like you saw earlier with the conveyors changing size because they were attached together, the same thing is going to happen here. Make sure I type that in right. There we go. So you'll see all the ductworks change all at the same time. 
And how well you deal with change can be the difference between a profitable project and a project where you lose money. Now this information can go over to Navisworks. It ports over very nicely, but it does take about two or three minutes to port this back over. So instead of doing that, I'm going to skip over and open up another file where we can see the change. And if you bear with me just a second, I'll come in and turn my timeliner back off here. And we can zoom up and see how that change has been incorporated into our design. Now I mentioned the timeliner right here. Let's talk about some of the advantages that you have by utilizing the, uh, the factory design suite and obtaining a three-dimensional version of your layout. The timeliner allows me to take a look at the schedule and compare it to the models that I have and produce a four-dimensional simulation of the construction phase. Over here to the left we have all of the tasks that are necessary for this project. We have the task name, plan start, planned end dates, and you can also track actual start and actual end. And each of these tasks have been assigned to the, the particular models that they represent. Over here to the right we have a Gantt chart. And just like any project, this starts off gradually where one thing has to happen and then another thing and then so on. But quite quickly it turns into a very complex project where multiple things are happening at the same time. Well, we can actually visualize that by using Navisworks in the factory design suite. So I can go to the simulate area and I can start playing this information and we can actually see the construction schedule happening in the context of time on our models. So I'm going to wait to a particularly busy day here and I'm going to pause it. There we go. So on uh, day 57, week number 9, uh, I've got uh, overhead robot 1 is 84% complete. Uh, the conveyors going in are 84% complete. The ductwork is 83% and the fences are roughly 55% done. And we can use that real-time fly-through and walk-through capability you saw earlier to go in and investigate the current status of the design on this particular day. You know, it just it might concern you that uh, down here we've got an installation of a very expensive piece of equipment going on. At the same time, overhead, we've got some duct work going in. So it might expose to you the fact that, you know, there's a potential risk of a delay having so many people work in the same area at the same time. Another one of the benefits you get with the factory design suite and specifically Navisworks is the ability to export this information. So I'm actually going to bring up a video that I created. You can save any of your timelines to a video. And if you bear with me, I'll just resize this for the recording window. And you can actually export these timelines uh, to a video file so that you can share with them with anyone. You can post them online or put them in a PowerPoint presentation. Very, very nice functionality. You can also walk around and generate the timeline at the same time. You can also save videos of your walking or your excursions as you explore the facility. Another big benefit is visualization. Now, you're going to see a bit more of this in Eric's presentation this afternoon or in one of the following presentations. So if you're interested in the visualization that I'm going to show you, you definitely want to attend Eric France's presentation a little bit later. But uh, we're going to come in and take a look at what you can do with this inside of a tool like Showcase. And again, bear with me as I modify this window. Showcase allows you to get to this uh, very easily to this photorealistic version of your design uh, so that you can generate images or movies of your design that are incredibly nice to look at, very, very photorealistic. And it doesn't take very long. This particular video you're looking at was about three hours worth of work once I had the three-dimensional model complete. 
I've often said that Showcase is a very fast and efficient way to get to visualization. Uh, 3D Studio Max also comes with the factory design suite. And that's more of a career path. If you wanted to see sparks flying and smoke coming off of the robots, not a problem for 3D Studio, but it does take quite a bit of time to get that particular effect. So this is going to bring to a conclusion my demonstration of the factory design suite. And I hope throughout the presentation you've seen that you know if you're uh, a factory owner, uh, equipment builder, or a system integrator, I hope you've seen just how easy it is to communicate your design to your end user and to produce your design utilizing the Autodesk factory design suite. Thanks for your attention and I'll turn it back over to Carl.